What's up guys, welcome to Dyna Demos. I'm Rod and today I'm gonna to be installing a Patriot Genesis fork spring on my 2016 Dyna Lowrider S. So make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. So like I said in the intro, I'm going to be replacing my fork spring with the Patriot Genesis fork spring. So the reason I'm only doing one fork spring, you might ask, like Rod, what the hell are you got? What the hell are you doing to your bike? Well, if you didn't know this, the Dyna Lowrider S and the FLD, so the FLD and the FXDLS, they have a cartridge on the left side. And the right side is just a regular spring. So my buddy was actually running the same setup on his 2017 Lowrider S. And he just recently upgraded to the Legends, uh, both cartridges. He uh, had this in his garage. I traded him a, a pair of FXR OG side covers that I had on my, from my old bike. And uh, yeah, so we just made the trade. Here's the spring I have. So what's different about this spring and the other spring is this has a, another spring inside of it. All right, so it's like a dual spring. I think that's what they call it, a dual rate spring. And the factory only has one spring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it out and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like uh, side by side and then we're gonna stick it in. So what I've already done is just taking off my fairing and broke torque on this top. One thing cap. I forgot to mention to you guys, one thing I did before I took all this apart is I set my camera up right here and I zip tied this ruler right here. And what I did was, or I'm sorry, I, I zip tied it like that. And what I did was, is I got on the bike and I collapsed the spring as much as I could. Um, and I'm gonna slow it down and I'm going to show you guys how much the factory collapsed versus how much the new Patriot spring collapses. A reason I want to do this is because Lego and I, we one thing that we noticed right away when we got our bikes is that the front end has way too much dive. So I've always wanted to tighten it up. I didn't want to spend like $1,100 to get cartridge on both sides and... So this was a uh, a good option for me, and I made a trade for it. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna see how it goes. So safety note, make sure you uh, catch that when you pull it off. Uh, I don't think it damaged anything. I'd recover on, thankfully. And uh, yeah, just make sure you're ready to catch it. So I gotta reach down and grab the spring right now and try to get it with these mechanical fingers. Hopefully I can get it. All right, no bueno, so we're gonna try something else. I'm gonna try this pry bar. There's the spring. Here's the old spacer vice, the new spacer. All right, one thing I wasn't sure about, but I just got a question answered for me when I took this out, is see how this end has more coils and this one doesn't? I wasn't sure which way to install it. Um, some things I read, hey, put the coils towards the top, put the coils, the tighter coils towards the bottom. 
Um, now I know I'm going to put the tighter coils towards the bottom. All right, so here is the new spring. It's a little bit longer. It's tighter wound, and it has the inner spring, and it's a lot heavier. So I'm going to clean this spring up, and I'm going to install it. One thing that I was going to do was I did get this all right, AMSOIL shock therapy because I wasn't sure if I was going to have to add any oil or not. I did spill a little on the floor right there as you can see. But since the spring is bigger, uh, I, I'm not going to put any oil in it because I think that, uh, you know, I probably only spilled like a couple ounces and that spring's bigger, more volume in the tube so I'm not gonna worry about that All right, so I'm gonna drop that back down before I install the cap I want to make sure that the gasket isn't messed up because I really don't want this thing to leak once I get it on The next day I started this job at like 11 o'clock at night and I couldn't get the cap back on and I got tired of messing with it so after about 20 minutes I had a lethal weapon Danny Glover moment decided I was too old for this shit so anyways I went to Harbor Freight and I got the uh, 1 and 3 8 socket and now I'm just gonna use the ratchet to get it on so here it goes So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put everything back together. I'm gonna put my fairing back on, but first I'm gonna change my oil using AMSOIL products supplied by At Diesel Oil Guy. Make sure you guys check them out. Uh, use code at DynaDemos for a little bit of a discount. If you have any questions, hit him up. Uh, he's super helpful and he's got an application for anything. I'm just getting ready to change the oil. I haven't changed the oil in a while on my bike. Uh, I'll, I have, uh, AMSOIL products supplied by Ad Diesel Oil Guy. Like I said, use code DynaDemos for 10% off. So additionally, if you order, if you're a shop or uh, you do a lot of oil changes uh, and you want to order more than 20 gallons, uh, he does offer up to 20% off. So, like I said, if you're interested in AMSOIL, hit him up. Uh, that's what me and Lego run. These Harleys get pretty hot. I've, uh, I've heard people say, you know, synthetic oil isn't good for your motor, but me and Lego work on helicopters. We, uh, they use synthetic oil, and those things get like five to 700 degrees Celsius, those motors on those helicopters. Uh, additionally, I got a buddy who works on NASCARs, and he said they run full synthetic. If you got a Harley, it's probably a good idea to run full synthetic. spring installed I'm doing that same road that I was on in my last moto vlog I figured this would be a good one to uh, really test this spring out on so right now would be a good time to tell you guys about uh, the suspension and the true track and everything that I'm running so Lego has the Big Bear Chopper front motor mount and he has stock front suspension. I think he's uh, planning on getting cartridges up front. And uh, then he has the RWD 14 inch shocks. 
All right, I'm running RWDs in the back. I got true track stabilizers in the front and the back. And then I just put this Patriot suspension spring on my bike. So it feels really good. My bike feels, uh, with, with all these upgrades that I've done, I feel really dialed in right now. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick brake check. Yeah, definitely, that's just the front brake, both brakes. I feel like the dive isn't as substantial as it was. I feel like I have a lot less dive than I used to have, uh, which is good. And I just was brake checking at about 50 mile an hour. Here we go, brake check again. I don't know, you guys can like watch my gauges and see like how much they dip, but. Here, I'll do it right now. You guys be the judge. All right, 60 mile an hour, quick brake check. All right, here's another one. And here's one more. Yeah, it feels good. Let's try another one. Feels good, the rebound feels good. to uh, go over again with the true track so I never had speed wobbles I know a lot of guys with dinos complain about them um, speed wobbles can be caused by a lot of things you know but I have never experienced them on this bike so I just did the true track front and back kind of as a uh, preventative measure after hearing all the horror stories and my uncle and my brother both run them on their dinas they uh they, they both swear by them so i just spent the money and got it and uh i feel like my bike's on a it's literally on a track it's like on a rail and then the rwds the best uh the best way I can describe those is like riding on a cloud. Uh, and I, <laughs> I stole that from Lego actually, but uh, I mean, he's absolutely right when he says that, you know, uh, they're, they're like riding on a cloud. You know, I just, I feel, I feel good. You know, I, I hit a couple of bumps with the stock going pretty hard. Uh, you know, I'm sure you've all felt the feeling, stock suspension, you hit that hard bump and it sends a jolt through your body and kind of takes your breath away. I've never experienced that with these and I've been running them, oh, I don't know, probably 5,000 miles or so now. Yeah, I don't got anything bad to say about them. True Track's working out good. Uh, the only one issue I did run into the True Track is one of the studs in the rear one snapped off. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the only issues I've had. So that's gonna do it for the Patriot Genesis fork spring install. On the difficulty scale, I would rate this a six pack. I only had to do the one side, but if I would've had to do the other side, I think it would've been just as easy. Um, one thing I do recommend is getting the one and three eighths socket. Don't try to do it with a, a crescent wrench or an adjustable, uh, just you know, save yourself the time and the headache and go get that socket. I think in terms of performance, I'm very, very happy. I said I got this spring in a trade. I think if I were to buy it, the juice is definitely worth the squeeze. You can pick up the set for 220. Um, if you have a switchback or a lowrider S, like, I, like I've said many times throughout this video, um, you're only going to need the one spring, so if you're one, if you're an owner of one of those bikes, go ahead and sell the other one on Dyna Parts Trader or go in halves with a buddy who has the same bike. One last thing I want to go over again, at Diesel Oil Guy, check them out on Instagram. 
Uh, he sells Amsoil products. He'll literally get you set up. If you got any questions, DM him directly. Use code at Dynademos for 10% off. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. No, I'm definitely going to enjoy riding my bike a lot more with this. I got my suspension all dialed in. So, as always, I'm Rod with Dynademos, and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.